This morning provides a really fantastic opportunity to learn more about the State Government's $180 million Advanced Queensland initiative that grows the Queensland knowledge economy and creates jobs for the future. It's not just about a government plan, however. It's about collaboration, or as at the university, we know it as engagement. Strong, sustainable partnerships lie at the heart of Advanced Queensland and they also lie at the heart of what the university does in terms of our research business. Your involvement and your input is vital to this sort of process, so that's why, exactly why, we've got a forum such as this morning to engage with the key people in our community and our businesses to make these partnerships happen. Look, from CQU's perspective, um, this is a really exciting initiative. I'm really pleased to be here this morning. It really echoes where we as a university are, are looking to take our research effort. Um, as I said earlier, engagement and collaboration really underpins everything that we do here at the university in terms of our research agenda. We have a history of focusing on practical, engaging, translational, applied research of working with business and industry to make things happen. One of the distinct advantages that we as a regional university can bring is that we can be your local partner, but at the same time we can connect you to a national and even an international audience and expertise base. We may not have the expertise right here on our doorstep, but we'll certainly try as hard as we can to connect you to who you need to so that we can get your business and industry powering along. That's how we do our business. We've already had some really strong successes in this um, environment. Uh, for those of you who, who would be aware, things like Professor Kerry Walsh's team, um, who works on, on hand handheld um, devices using infrared technologies mm -hmm. to help um, produce growers figure out whether, whether their fruit is ripe. Um, yeah. We build uh, linkages with um, the local mining industry about water quality and any number of other initiatives that, are, that I won't go through in detail this morning. But certainly um, that applied, engaged agenda is very much where we're at as a university. The, the real advantage, I think, of a program like this um, is that with the government's support, we can look to make further, to, sorry, we can further strengthen and broaden the type of engagement that we already do um, and to make it sustainable over time. So those of you who are in the research game know that perhaps these things don't happen overnight. It's about building enduring partnerships to make this sort of thing work. Um, and this sort of program, which we'll hear about more this morning, um, is exactly the right sort of thing to help us get that sort of um, partnerships and, and productivity underway. I would like to invite uh, Wade Mann um, to the podium so he could deliver our traditional um, welcome to country for us, please. Yeah, thanks, Susan. Yeah, my name's Wade Mann. I'm a traditional owner from the land we meet today. The Drumble people have been the carers and protectors of this land for the past 50,000 years. I'd like to start off by acknowledging my elders, past and present. As we all know, our elders are the most important people in our community. They're the keepers of our stories, our history, our past, and hopefully to bring the young people into the future and make them into better role models. Also, I'd like to acknowledge Bapa Do. Bapa Do is our God, creator, the maker. He's the maker of our land, our people, the oceans, the seas, and the animals. Also, I'd like to acknowledge Butteroo. Butteroo is the green tree frog. He's our token. He's part of our dreaming, part of our believing. All the tribes all the way across Australia have got tokens that represent their tribes. As I said, ours is a green tree frog. So he's the bringer of the rain. Before the rain comes, you'll hear him croaking, and when the rain goes, you'll hear him celebrating. So without rain, you don't have water. Without water, you don't have life. So he's the substance of all life on Earth. He's a very important part of our existence. Also, welcome to country is a very important part of Aboriginal tradition. All the tribes have done welcome to country for tens of thousands of years to welcome people onto their lands. It's about having respect for the land and having respect for the people of that land. The Drumble land takes in a vast part of central Queensland. We go west to the Gagango Range. We go down south to Raglan Creek. We go out into the oceans, about 30 kilometres out. Then we go down to the, up to the Sixth River, a place called Ogmore, where I was brought up with my uncles, my aunties, my grandparents, my brothers and sisters, where we learned a lot of our traditional ways, a lot of our traditional huntings and way of lives. So the Drumble area has got four major tribes. On the other side, the Gracemay area, You've got the Warrigal tribe that goes out to the Gagango Range, up to Moorabah, down to Raglan Creek. Where we are now, we're in the Tanoomble tribe, which takes on the other side of Gracemere, Rockhampton, Raglan Creek, Imi Park, Yipoon, and up to the other side of the Yuvasaki, and you're up around the wetlands. And then up along the coast, we've got Ninjabal, which goes up the towns of Nolan. And up around the Shellwater Bay area, we've got Kurumbara, which goes up towards the Sticks River and out towards the Fitzroy area. Within those four major tribes, there's about 20 smaller tribes. Each one has its boundaries which are covered by the rivers, the creeks, the oceans and the seas. And no tribe was allowed to go on anyone else's land unless they were given permission from that tribe. 
up in the Shoalwater Bay area of one tribe on the government of someone else's land. They go up to the boundary and they sit there in a semicircle. Two or three women from that tribe would come across and they'd light a fire in front of them. They'd go back to the camp. And three or four men would come across and they'd join that circle. They'd sit there in silence for 10 or 15 minutes. Then they'd start wailing and crying. Then they'd start laughing and joking. And the tribe from that area would invite them into the, into the, um, into the tribe. If they're there for a ceremony or a dance, they'd exchange gifts, such as boomerangs, spears, or different artifacts. And they'd have a boria ring on the ground, which is a circle on the ground about three or four metres in diameter. It's usually covered around by rocks, but it can be dug in the ground with a stick. The tribe from that area would go in and they'd start dancing. they dance for 10 or 15 minutes, and they'd come out and invite the other tribe in. The reason why they do this, they say, you're welcome to our country. While you're in our country, you are protected, protected by Bapadu, our guide, our totem, our ancestors. And on your journey home, you'll also be protected. So it's all about having respect for the land and having respect for the people of that land. That's why the Aboriginal people are the longest continuous living race in the world, because they've always had respect for the land, had respect for the people and understanding and their spiritual belief within the land. So on behalf of the Drumble people, I'd like to welcome you all here today and I hope we get a lot out of today and um, we've got a great outcome. So thank you very much. It's now my pleasure to introduce the Minister for Science and Innovation, Leanne Enoch. Well, thank you very much and um, uh, thank you, Uncle Wade, for your welcome today. Uh, you know, it's this way of beginning, of course, that uh, puts us in good spirit and uh, gives us that, uh, the, that, that good spirit for conversations into the future, so I thank you for that. And of course, uh, before I go any further, I will also acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we gather. And in doing so, may I acknowledge the more than 3,000 generations of Durrumbul people who have maintained cultural practices on this country. Uh, and can I acknowledge all of our elders from wherever you come from, whatever your culture, uh, those that have passed and those still with us guiding us into the future. Uh, and can I also acknowledge uh, some of my good friends here, uh, Minister Byrne, Mr. Minister Bill Byrne, who is the local member and um, uh, incredibly, uh, incredibly passionate about innovation as it, as it pertains to his own portfolios uh, in agriculture and in sports. So it's great to see you here, Bill. Thank you for coming along. Uh, and also uh, the, our Mayor, so uh, Margaret Strelo. Uh, Thank you so much for taking um, your time to be here today. I know we're meeting afterwards to talk more about innovation in the city, so I appreciate your time. And my good friend, Brittany Lager, uh, who's the member for Keppel, uh, and I know has incredible passion for innovation and what that means for business and uh, business outcomes. So, uh, so today, uh, again, thank you to all of you. Thank you to CQU for hosting us. Uh, and thank you for you, all of you to be, for coming along to be part of the conversation. I'm going to share with you a little bit about Advanced Queensland, uh, the whole sort of program if you like. I'm going to spend a bit of time uh, showing you some videos as well, so there'll be a little bit of uh, change. You won't just be hearing from me, because uh, we've been talking to lots of people across the state. This is, uh, you know, as we heard from Susan, this is all about collaboration, and we have spent a great deal of time co-designing uh, some of the information that I'm going to share with you. Uh, so it's important to hear some of the messages from other parts of the state who've been part of our co-design. Uh, so, let's begin with a bit of uh, understanding what we've got ahead of us. You know, we live in a great state. Uh, it's a great place to live, a great place to play, a great place to work, a uh, great place to study and raise a family. Uh, but we can't just admire our great environment and our fantastic uh, weather uh, and be complacent about our economic future and prosperity. Traditionally, the Queensland economy has focused on sectors such as resources, agriculture, construction and tourism. Capital expenditure in the resource sector is declining and world markets are volatile. You only need to have a look at what's been happening this year across the world to know that these are hard things to predict now. Our workforce profile is changing and trade and investment priorities are shifting globally. While our <coughs> traditional sectors will remain important to our economy, uh, the Queensland economy must diversify. It is absolutely crucial. We have the opportunity to build uh, an economy based on high growth, knowledge intensive businesses that can compete globally in a world increasingly driven by technology. We know that science and technology is 
absolutely changing our world in an ever increasing pace. Uh, it is happening at a pace that we probably didn't even really understand five years ago. And in fact, it's a pretty fair thing to say that over the next 10 years, we are likely to experience the equivalent of something like 100 years of change. That's how fast it is happening. Uh, I think everybody has examples of what that might look like, from 3D printing to driverless cars to drones that help with mustering cattle uh, to all kinds of things that are happening. Uh, these things are going to happen whether we are prepared for them or whether we like them or not. They are already out there. And we need to embrace these changes and make them work to our advantage. But we also need to be leading them, realising the benefits, being the driver on science and innovation. We can't afford to be just the end recipients or someone somewhere else is reaping the rewards. You know, this brings challenges to both employment opportunities and demand for skills. Uh, the Committee for Economic Development's 2015 report, Australia's Future Workforce, focuses on the jobs and skills needed to ensure that our economy continues to grow and diversify. The report talks about how the next wave of industrial revolution will fundamentally uh, reshape business activity and notes the probability that 40% of Australia's workforce, that's more than 5 million people, could be replaced by automation within the next 10 to 20 years. That is a staggering statistic. 40% of all of our current jobs have the potential of being automated in the next 10 to 15, 10 to 20 years. That's staggering. Uh, and so if Australia, and Queensland in particular, is to maintain an internationally competitive and robust economy, we must plan now for the changes, the challenges, and the opportunities that we face. So we'll just hear a little bit. Um, sorry, we'll just hear a little bit from Stephen Tate. The ones that currently exist, but our biggest challenge and also our biggest opportunity is we can be a destination for the jobs of the future because we've created the right incentives and the right environment for people to thrive. So why advance Queensland? Uh, innovation is an indispensable driver of economic growth. The OECD estimates that innovation will account for at least 62% of Australia's productivity growth in the long term. It is therefore vital that the innovation system works seamlessly from the generation of ideas through to generation of products, services and jobs. Advanced Queensland has been designed through research, cons consultation uh, and international evidence of what works. So it hasn't just been dreamed up in uh, one little office um, somewhere in a part of Queensland. This is stuff that we've been looking at across the world so that we can actually position Queensland to be competitive into the future. Uh, we are poised as a state to take advantage of more than a decade of smart state investments. And, uh, and we shouldn't... Um, you know, we shouldn't underestimate what that has done for us. Over the last 17 years, we've seen $4.9 billion invested in uh, research and research infrastructure. At that time, uh, there was an understanding that there would be a juncture on the horizon in terms of our economy. Uh, so that investment, uh, ensuring that we've got research infrastructure, that we've got the research happening, has actually put us in a really great position. Uh, but while this provides a good base to build on, the full potential of translating this scientific and research uh, capability into real world economic, environmental and social gains has not fully been realised in Queensland. The research tell us, tells us that aspects of our current innovation system needs a good kickstart. So government intervention and support will help sustain a culture which provides opportunities for entrepreneurialism to flourish. Uh, for example, we need to strengthen the culture of collaboration, which enables research to translate into products and services. Collaboration across research and industry increases the likelihood of successful innovation by 70%. But Australia sits last out of 33 nations on the OECD index for collaboration. There are gaps in the system which support research and ideas to move through proof of concept and be ready for investment, and we've got a short supply of venture capital. Uh, a skilled workforce is important for our future. We already have a skill shortage in science and technology as well as a need to grow the base of entrepreneurial skills and know-how. In entrepreneurship, Australia ranks 29th globally 
lagging behind Singapore, Turkey, Chile, China and the United States. We also need to grow and attract a greater number of startups, businesses with potential to succeed in global markets. Too many good ideas move overseas to seek the support to establish companies and develop new products. We've got all the great research, we've got all the great ideas, uh, but if our innovation system is not, uh, does not flow properly, is not seamless, then what we see is what we've had for the last few years, uh, some years now, of those great ideas heading offshore and being commercialised in other countries. And then we end up being uh, the end user. We end up buying, we are the recipients, we end up buying the great uh, commercialised idea, uh, even though we may have generated the research and the idea here. So for Queensland though, globally, uh, we are in a unique position. And being geographically close to Asia and effectively in the same time zone, at the same time as offering a secure and stable regulatory and legislative environment. So Queensland can provide a gateway into Asia Pacific markets and has much to offer. Advanced Queensland is designed to provide a comprehensive suite of interventions and programs to grasp these opportunities. It will create jobs now and for the future. It will boost productivity, spur commercialisation and increase the rate of, and growth of startups and other businesses. You know, one day, uh, what I want to see is, uh, you know, we've had the smart state, we've had the sunshine state, we need to be the startup state. Uh, that is where we need to be focusing if we are going to be able to compete globally. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously inside of this, uh, being able to um, uh, foster this kind of thing, to ensure that we've got innovation across our system, uh, we keep in mind the fact that it has been estimated that innovation and digital transformation have the potential to generate $136 billion and 500,000 jobs annually. And it can change the way we live, the way we work and the way we play. So I want Queensland to have a seamless innovation ecosystem where the best and brightest minds from around the country and all over the world come to generate great ideas and crucially, get the support to translate those ideas into compelling business cases for private investment. Our future prosperity must start with our young people. We need a pipeline of talent um, flowing through from our schools and our universities into business and industry supporting the jobs of the future. And inside our Advanced Queensland um, package, we have three areas. Uh, one is the best and brightest um, and I'll talk a little bit about this now. And it is related to the fact that we need that pipeline and we need to start with our young people. You know, countries with a strong track record in innovation also tend to have a strong commitment to STEM education. So we all know what that is in this room, science, technology, engineering and maths. And as a result, they have a strong pipeline of STEM workers. Now let's not make any mistake here. STEM is going to be a crucial part of everything that we do in the future. There will still be plumbers and carpenters. There'll still be uh, many of the jobs that we see here, but uh, uh, apart from those that you know can, can um, potentially be um, automated, but every single one of those jobs will have a STEM component to it. Uh, I talk about, uh, because I'm the Minister for Housing and Public Works as well, so I have a lot of plumbers and uh, tradespeople that I work with quite a lot. And when I talk to uh, people from the plumbing industry, for instance, I say to them, it is not too far in the, dis in the distant future where a plumber will be at a work site, they'll be uh, dealing with something that's a little bit different from the norm, and what they'll do is they'll take their, their normal tools and they'll take their tablet or the device, whatever they use to access their technology. Uh, if there's a problem to be solved, they're going to be able to take a photo of it, download it into some software, create the solution, send it to the back of the truck to the 3D printer, print out the solution, install it, uh, and then, you know, obviously be able to solve the problem. This is why every single part uh, of our economy is going to be reliant on STEM and why it's so important that we make sure that STEM skills are part of everyday uh, education outcomes for our kids. So the um, modelling for um, by PwC finds that shifting just 1% of the workforce into STEM roles would add $57.4 billion to the GDP. So just 1%. That's the difference that that can make economically for our state. 
Three quarters of the fastest growing occupations require STEM, skills and knowledge. Yet, while Year 12 enrolments have grown in the past 20 years, STEM participation rates have fallen. So when you think about my scenario about plumbing, we have got to ensure that our young people are ready for this. Uh, we need to change some perceptions about STEM and the opportunities it presents as a career path for our children. In fact, nowadays, an increasing number of people are adding uh, the creative arts to the mix uh, and calling it STEAM. Uh, you know, I know that when I'm thinking about science and innovation, I used to be a drama teacher, so you know, I think about the creative aspect um, and how, um, how that can um, complement uh, STEM skills as we start to think about how we commercialise, how we turn these ideas into something that's going to actually be a product or a service. Um, and in fact, uh, lately, when we talk more about entrepreneurship, um, I've been referring to this more as e-STEAM, uh, where, where we actually have entrepreneurship, science, technology, engineering, arts and maths. STEM remains the core, of course, but there are these other things that are missing in our innovation system uh, that if we're assisting uh, young people and uh, you know, people across our communities, across our state, uh, that we'll be able to participate globally. Uh, and that's why, uh, I guess, you know, we all have a role to play in that. Uh, we have a role to play in that as parents, as educators, as business, as the community. Because we need to change the conversations we're having with our children. Uh, we need to shift the focus for them. Uh, you know, instead of asking them what job they want to do when they grow up, uh, we need to start asking them what do they want to create? What do they want to lead? What difference do they want to make in the world? Because that is how they will be able to compete globally with the changes that they will be living with. You know, I think about my, I've got two teenage sons and a teenage nephew that stays with me a lot, too much. Three teenage boys in a house is, I don't recommend it. Um, there's never any food and it smells bad. So, but you know, they, uh, I share this story uh, quite a lot as well that I, you know, I walked into the house a few weeks ago quite late in the evening and here's the three of them. Uh, you know, you're overwhelmed by the smell when you walk in and the food and the whatever. So one of them was, uh, one of them was on their phone uh, doing their banking. The other one was on the laptop uh, ordering food uh, through the shopping centre, you know, so clearly they'd eaten everything. So they were ordering, putting the list together for the Woolies, you know, delivery. And then the third one was down in his room uh, on his tablet, uh, teaching himself how to play drums uh, via YouTube. You know, that is their reality. Um, and we need to make sure that they have got all the skills necessary to be able to participate uh, economically, socially into the future. Um, so to start this shift in thinking uh, and these priorities, the Palaszczuk government is undertaking a future schools review into the teaching of STEM in Queensland schools. This will include how to expand the program to bring coding, computer science, as well as early stage robotics and entrepreneurial skills into the curriculum. So uh, last week, the Premier and the Education Minister released Advancing Queensland, uh, Advancing Education rather, and it's an action plan for education in Queensland, which will consider these uh, very uh, issues that we've been talking about. Uh, they also launched uh, hashtag Coding Counts, a discussion paper on coding and robotics in Queensland schools. Um, hashtag Coding Counts uh, proposes that state schools co-design technology-based learning with students and develop real-world partnerships with industry or universities. And, and, and in many ways, it epitomises what Advanced Queensland is all about. So um, for those of you who have interest in that space, I encourage you to um, have, a, have a good look at that paper and um, obviously have your own input. But the Future Schools Review will also focus on the teaching of STEM through professional development, teacher scholarships, and by working more closely with universities. The uh, Department of Education and Training has appointed Griffith University to undertake a review of world's best practice in STEM. Uh, is surveying teaching uh, practices across the state as a f and uh, they're doing that as a first step towards changing teaching approaches. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just hear a little bit from, um, oh, sorry. from Anne. The main reason being that schools are not the same place as they were 10 years ago. The world is not the same place it was 10 years ago. So we need to move with what's happening. We need, need to move with the same pace as the world is moving around us. So we need to review what's happening in schools to make sure that the STEM that's being taught in school is, is exactly what the students need when they actually leave school. 
So we also need to, you know, that is one part of the pipeline, but we also need to continue the pipeline of respected graduates, researchers and scientists. And we need to get them working closely with business and industry to translate good ideas into commercial outcomes. Um, you know, too often, as we've already said, terrific research is conducted in this country and that's turned in, taken offshore and turned into um, a product that we end up uh, having to buy or a service that we end up having to buy. So we need universities working with industry to translate more scientific and technological research into real products and services. This is where the jobs of the future will be, but we must start now. Advanced Queensland will incentivise collaboration between our university researchers and industry to make sure we maximise benefits for local research. The $50 million Best and Brightest Fund, so this first uh, component or category of Advanced Queensland, uh, has been designed to develop, attract and retain world-class talent, both scientific and entrepreneurial. We need to address the brain drain and increase the pool of industry-savvy researchers working in our system. Uh, so there are a number of... Um, so there are a number of things that have already been launched. So the research fellowships and PhD scholarships uh, require researchers to collaborate and spend significant time with industry to assist in moving research from the lab and research papers into the real world. So the first round of the research fellowships uh, closed last week and uh, there was a, a very healthy uptake, let me tell you. Um, it's an increase in what we've seen previously. So the fact that uh, we have indicated that uh, all these research fellowships and PhD scholarships uh, will be awarded if there is an industry partner. The fact that we've had a huge uptake uh, indicates that absolute um, desire to you know, uh, work in that way. So that's fantastic. Uh, we also want to, uh, uh, sorry, the PhD scholarships will close this Friday. So if you've got researchers um, out there that are interested in that, they've only got two days so um, left to submit. I know many have um, put in their expressions of interest, but like all, like all, I don't know, you know, I know when I was at uni and or when I was thinking about these, it was always the last day, it was right down to the wire, but just to remind them. Um, but we also want to, under, uh, to address underrepresentation of women and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in research. Um, this massive and um, fast-paced change that we're seeing across the globe has the potential to further marginalise groups that are already marginalised. So we need to intervene in that space as well to ensure that there are opportunities for people to come along, otherwise we will have further social issues into the future. Uh, so that's why uh, we've had the Advanced Queensland Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander PhD Scholarship Program, uh, which will support Indigenous undergraduates in gaining a research PhD degree, uh, degree. This lays the foundation and that fundamental foundation for a future, in research, uh, a future research career. And the Advanced Queensland Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Research Fellowships aim to help attract, retain and develop promising Indigenous researchers in Queensland. Uh, these two programs will uh, close next Friday on the 30th of October. So again, um, if you know anybody. <laughs> so our Best and Brightest Fund also includes the Advanced Queensland Women's Academic Fund uh, to support female researchers in maintaining their research careers and supporting Queensland organisations in promoting the achievements of Queensland's female researchers. And eligible applications for this fund can be submitted at any stage. The Advanced Queensland Knowledge Transfer Partnerships uh, that program creates links between businesses and university and it provides graduates with the opportunity to become more business savvy. So this program will encourage businesses, especially small and medium sized enterprises, which comprise, as we all know, more than 95% of businesses in this state, uh, to join forces with universities to power the state's knowledge economy. The Advanced Queensland Knowledge Transfer Partnerships Program is about collaboration and transferring knowledge by putting university graduates in a business to help them on strategic business innovation projects. The program will fund two thirds of a 12 month project with grants up to $50,000. The second key investment uh, of, uh, of Advanced Queensland uh, is the $46 million future job strategy. And it is unashamedly about collaboration. All funding under this strategy will need to see strong evidence of collaboration and funding contributions from other parties. The future jobs strategy will open the door to new industry and research collaborations, tackle the big innovation challenges, focus on translation of ideas into real outcomes and deliver 10 year roadmaps for industries with global growth potential. The Advanced Queensland uh, Innovation Partnerships, for instance, 
will support mission-driven research and development projects uh, focused on the needs of industry and end users within priority areas such as climate change, clean energy, biotechnology and advanced manufacturing. Uh, applicants and other partnering organisations will need to provide matching funding for this. So we are absolutely committed to the idea of collaboration. Already, uh, we have three flagship partnerships developing. Uh, with the Emory University and the University of Queensland, uh, Siemens, Queensland University of Technology and the Translational Research Institute, and a Johnson & Johnson Innovation Partnering Office at QUT. Uh, so these are international partnerships that we've been able to um, bring along. I'm not doing good at this, Liam. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Advanced Queensland Innovation Challenges will identify emerging needs and immediate demands uh, the big issues facing Queensland and uh, ask researchers and industry to combine to provide the answers. This is about encouraging collaboration in order to get results. The questions could be related to agriculture or renewable energy, big data, uh, which is a, you know, that is a huge opportunity for us uh, and also a challenge. Uh, it could be about health services delivery, among many others. Uh, it is a globally successful model where our best innovators rise to the challenge. The third and the final, third and the final element of the Advanced Queensland program is the $76 million Advanced Queensland Business Investment Attraction Package, which is being uh, designed to support SMEs and startups to bring new ideas to market and increase the investment ready deal flow into the angel and venture capital sector. Uh, a 2013 study showed that uh, a very small percentage of Australia's tech startups are based in Queensland. And if you just look at Brisbane alone, only 7% of Australia's tech startups are in Brisbane. Uh, so that obviously diminishes as we go into our more regional parts of Queensland. So on the supply side, we need to work with the private sector to raise the rate of funding for startups and SMEs and provide better access to advice and mentoring to help them grow. On the demand side, we need to grow a bigger pool of startups which are investment ready and have global growth potential. So we'll just listen to Peter for a minute. Challenging the way that traditional business is done. Um, we're always pushing the boundaries and the technology enables a lot of that change. So especially as companies grow very quickly and find out new innovative ways to do things, we can bring it back and educate those traditional businesses enabling them to change as well. So the programs in the Business Investment Attraction Package are currently being co-designed with key stakeholders. Uh, and let me tell you, it is a pretty exciting room to be in when you've got all of these startups and you know, people from across that sector generating ideas from their skill base, from their knowledge about uh, global practices. Uh, they are positioning us very well, let me tell you. So, uh, you know, they are... Uh, so my department, of course, in that process is uh, actively consulting with the sector uh, to, design, to design those programs that show Queensland as a place where all stakeholders work together to take great ideas through proof of concept to investable products, business outcomes and ultimately jobs. Uh, and like I said, there's already some pretty exciting ideas that are coming out of that. Uh, you know, some about student entrepreneur programs, um, visiting entrepreneurs and, and investors, uh, startup precincts, that seems to be a big focus of the sector, um, and innovation through government procurement. So how do we ensure that government is, you know, walking the talk in this space? And I'm, I tell you, I'm very excited about what's going to come out of there. Uh, so uh, that'll be interesting announcements as, as we go forward, and I know the sector's very excited about it. Uh, the final funding program under Advanced Queensland is the Business Development Fund, which, has, uh, which was an election commitment uh, of the Palaszczuk government to establish early stage and follow on venture capital to invest in innovative and growing businesses in Queensland. The Premier launched this uh, fund yesterday uh, with the Treasurer and arrangements for its management is being led by the Queensland Treasurer himself. Uh, but friends and, and ladies and gentlemen, Advanced Queensland is a landmark program that is right for Queensland at this time of great change and opportunity. It provides a comprehensive package to strengthen and support all parts of our innovation system. It will support entrepreneurs, industry, universities and government to grasp opportunities in growing markets and position the state as an attractive investment destination. This is crucial. 
uh, where there is this kind of activity, uh, where there is this kind of commitment from governments, investment flows. Uh, we're seeing that in other countries. Uh, you know, if you, if you look at what's happening um, uh, even in Israel, uh, in places like Chile, where they are creating the environment where investment is ready to come. Uh, we just need to make sure that we are attractive to those, uh, those deal flows, those monies that are out there. Uh, and that's what Advanced Queensland is, is all about. But of course, it's not always enough. Uh, the Advanced Queensland program is comprehensive and targeted, but it will only work if it helps create a strong, vibrant and a s exciting uh, innovation ecosystem. Uh, we need a culture change that values collaboration and celebrates entrepreneurship and innovation in our state. We need everyone to participate, to connect and to apply for the opportunities that the Palaszczuk government is putting on the table. As part of the broader Advanced Queensland initiative, we want to foster networking and collaboration events where interested people from all sectors uh, come together. Students, researchers, academics, business people, entrepreneurs, innovators and startups. Uh, these events need to take uh, place in, in big cities, uh, in regional places like Rockhampton, and they need to be connected. So I encourage everyone here to get involved in these events, to keep the conversations going, to look for uh, what people are calling structured serendipity uh, that allows people and ideas to spark and collaboration to start or to deepen. But So before we finish today, as I understand it, we are going to ask you to vote on your interest in future participation or even in organising such events locally. Uh, so by doing this, of course, uh, when we're able to collaborate in this fashion and connect across the state, we will be able to position Queensland as a globally recognised place where industry, universities and government work collaboratively to develop the next wave of solutions that address major economic, social, and environmental challenges, and you can help make sure that Rockhampton is at the forefront of this economic uh, transformation. <coughs> of course, the Palaszczuk government's advanced Queensland plan is more than just economics and jobs growth. It's about educating our children to give them the brightest possible future. It's about encouraging our young people to be creative and to not be afraid to have a go. You know, it's about every person in Queensland working together to create a new era of opportunity for Queenslanders. And for me, as the Minister for Science, if at the end of my time as the Minister, hopefully it's a long way from here, <laughs> but at the end of this time, at my time as Minister, if we've got uh, kids kicking the soccer ball around on a Saturday morning talking about um, science or talking about uh, new job opportunities in terms of their new ideas for uh, startups, or if we've got people having a cup of tea or a cup of coffee at their local coffee shop talking about uh, what new great business idea they're thinking about and how they're going to be expanding it. We've got people at the pub, like I never go to the pub now, but if you've got people at the pub, you know, over their beer talking about, uh, you know, science and what difference it's making in their business and how they're innovating uh, and how they've got partnerships across the world, you know, then we will have gone some way to be able, in terms of positioning ourselves uh, for this massive change that is ahead of us, that is already upon us. So I encourage you to be part of what we're, um, what we're hoping to do across the state around Advanced Queensland. Be part of Advanced Queensland, um, the initiative itself. Uh, encourage people to apply for what's on the table. Um, but also, take this opportunity uh, to be excited about what's going to happen next, to be part of it and take this opportunity to share that excitement and that space of innovation uh, with all of your friends and your family as we get ready for what's happening next into our future. And thank you so much. Sorry. I do have a little, I do have a message from my boss. Work with our research institutions, our universities, our business community, our investors, we want to make sure that the future of Queensland is there for everyone to grasp. But it must be a collaboration. We must continue to have the conversation about what sort of future we want to see Queensland. Because it can't happen alone. I could just briefly touch on three of the key messages I, I heard the Minister speak about. Um, one is consultation and co-design and it, that was an actual 
a very genuine commitment um, from the government on this. I can literally share that we had people ringing us from the department saying we want to build programs about your PhD students. Tell us what will make them come and participate in this program. How can they work with business? How do we design the scholarships? How do we make sure that this is going to fit into their assessment and all of those things? So it was really a genuine opportunity for us to influence and be involved with the work that the government were doing to, to put this program together and I really appreciate that so thank you. The second was hearing about that local and international frames of reference. Now we are absolutely um, proud to be a regional university but we're absolutely also working in the international space So, and we would like to build those partnerships with you coming along our way as well. So we're working in China, in Brazil, um, with the Australian College of Kuwait, that's a partnership we've refreshed just over the past few weeks. So there is opportunities for us to, as your local partner to help you build those pipelines to international expertise. And the last one, of course, is about opportunities. Um, $180 million program, and it seems like they thought of everything. Indigenous women, goodness, I wish the women ones were around when I was going through my PhD. Um, business and industry entrepreneurship. So it's really about providing the support to get researchers working with business and industry because they're the people who can really activate these things and make them happen. So that's, I hope, a good segue through to our first local speaker because she's very much someone who's been able to help activate and make things happen. So um, if I can invite uh, Desley Cowley from Spruka Hire. Um, and while she's making her way up, a little bit of information about Desley. Desley's uh, an independent licensed shopping centre manager. She's a speaker, a trainer and a facilitator who specialises in building vital, profitable retail communities. She's developed Spruka Hire um, to include a national online talent directory as well as a training course to help retailers better compete with online marketers and understand the growing importance of providing exceptional customer experiences um, in this age of technology. She's also a very valued member of our Rockhampton Regional Engagement Committee, so she works with the university on us, um, with us on that. Um, and in her spare time, she's also president of Busy Women, which is one of our um, local business forums uh, situated down on the Capricorn Coast. So I'm sure we'll um, all learn very much from what Desley's got to mention this morning. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks Susan, I appreciate that. Can everyone hear me okay? I usually find that I'm louder on the s microphones, is that okay? Yeah. Well, your iPad is device, so. Awesome, and I'll probably have the technology issues as well, working out the, um, making it press its buttons. Um, so yes, I am a property investor. We have properties here in, my husband and I, in Rockhampton and the Capricorn Coast and in Bundaberg. Uh, I am a licensed shopping centre manager, speaker, trainer and facilitator with 26 years experience in shopping centre management across four states. The majority of my shopping centre management experience has been in central Queensland. I've worked in every shopping centre in Rockhampton and Yapoon except city centre plaza, but I've also worked in Sydney, Canberra, Bundaberg and Alice Springs. Um, I feel that I've had constant, consistent success in retailer profit, centre occupancy, customer numbers and community access. Spruker Hire is a business that I developed um, through my background and experience in shopping centre management because it is a big issue for retail which is a fairly seasonal and fluctuating industry where when they are at their busiest times and they have to increase their staff levels and they've got inexperienced staff on the floor trying to serve their customers. So what um, Spruka Hire is, it's an on online uh, talent directory, it's a national directory, you can actually log into my website uh, wherever you are in Australia, put in what type of talent you want, Spruker, Bingo Caller, Visual Merchandiser, Cooking Demonstrator, Product Demonstrator, Brand Ambassador, any of those type of jobs, put in your postcode and you'll find a list of Sprukers or talent that uh, either are willing to travel to your area or live in your area that are willing to do the work there. So the idea for me was that I wasn't running around chasing up talent for retailers at short notice, but that they could deal directly with the talent. So I earn my money from the annual subscription um, from the Spruker rather than from the shopping centre or the retailer. But I also offer retailer training and as we all know, uh, one of the big issues that we have here in central Queensland, probably everywhere, is the level of customer service and that's part of it is because of the training as well. So I offer retail training and because my background's in shopping centre, marketing and management, I offer shopping centre promotions. So that's what Spruka High is all about. Will I wait? <laughs> 
Okay, the original idea came because I wanted a passive income. After 26 years in the industry, you're pretty well over it. And um, <laughs> I've written a book and I've had an editor to look at it and I have to rewrite it because he said I sound cynical and jaded. <laughs> so I am in the process of really redoing that. But the whole idea of the, you know, 1,000 spruikers at $240 a year each is for me to have a passive income. For my husband and I to be able to travel and uh, to be home based and to have independence so that I can speak freely in our community, which I do, um, and not feel that my income or my business is going to be um, impacted as a result. And we can choose to live wherever we like, which we t tend to end up coming back to central Queensland wherever we go. Um, my husband's born and bred here and, and now you know, we met here when we were 17 and we were married in St Andrew's Presbyterian Church, which is very sad to see it sitting there empty. Uh, so, you know, this is our roots and I guess I relate to the Indigenous um, sense of belonging and the sense of attachment to the land um, here for some reason. Don't ask me why you just feel like you're home when you're in Rocky. And we did go down to Perth for a couple of years, but we ended up back up here. So the journey, I started the Spruka Hire um, website in 2011 while I was still a PAYE employee, but I've had a full-time focus on it since July 2014. Uh, this year, in this last 12 months, I've completed the KPI 40-week program, and the idea of that, KPI stands for Key Person of Influence, is the five steps to success are pitch, publish, product, profile, and partnerships. And they say that if you do all of those things in that order, you will become a key person of influence in your industry. It's not about becoming uh, Tom Cruise or, um, you know, I don't know who, isn't that bad that Tom Cruise is the first person that comes to my <laughs> mind. Um, it's just about being influential in your industry and making a genuine contribution. I have yet to recoup the lost wages, but I'm getting there. So what are the challenges? Why do I keep going and not, and not just quit? I guess the biggest challenge is building the collateral, the website, the brochures, the, um, the resources that provide the value for my spruikers who registered, that provide the value for retailers to want to come and use my services. That's been the biggest, um, the second biggest, the book's been the biggest challenge. Um, the second, the biggest challenge really, because I'm 60 years of age, um, the, the um, technology, I've used technology in my job ever since day dot, since my first job as promotions assistant at Shopping Fair. But it's such a changing environment that even when I started on uh, rebuilding my website, which relaunched yesterday, um, you know, the knowledge that you've got to know to be able to communicate to the web developers what you're after and the ability for them to communicate back so that they are contributing and collaborating to make sure that I do end up with something of value and not just something that I've got in my head that's going to work. Building partnerships is the biggest thing as well and I agree with that, that you can't do it on your own in small business. What's innovative about my business? I do believe my talent directory is innovative. It is the only directory of its kind in Australia. My business name's Spruker Hire. I have a whole lot of people tell me that that's a dumb name because Spruker has a negative connotation, but I believe I own the name. If you look for Spruker on the web, I'm on page one. If I put customer service or retail training, I'd be on page 467,000, so you'd never find me. So I'm going to be the Coca-Cola of spruiking. <laughs> and uh, yes, and I would love it to be an international business, but I've got to conquer Australia first. Um, I have a regional presence, but a national focus. I do believe strongly in community partnerships. I do believe that shopping centre, retail communities, communities in general, have to um, embrace their entire community and not be selective. Um, and I think that um, 
by doing this as an online thing with income coming from all over Australia, I'm actually bringing income back into central Queensland that wouldn't otherwise be here. Um, the collaboration, I have, uh, as I mentioned, the KPI program that I completed in August has been a huge, has had a huge impact on my confidence and my willingness to take the risk and spend more money on my business to realise that I've got to do that to get to it, to generate the income that I'm looking for out of it and the passive, the passive income and the ability to travel that I want. I've just recently partnered with CCIQ and I'm really excited about that as well. President of the Busy Women and CQ Uni Regional Engagement Committee. Um, I have I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the networking with Busy Women and the CQ Uni Regional Engagement Committee and I'm very grateful for that. You, my husband always goes, what are you going to all these things for? You're not making any money out of them. But you know, you've really got to get out there and network and talk to people if you want to make a difference. Where will I be in 10 years time? I'll be 70. <laughs> So as long as I have health, I will be speaking. But Spruker Hire and managing that website, I imagine, will be a challenge for me with the technology and the way that it changes. So it will either be under management or sold. And uh, yeah, and that's what I say. Speaking, professional speaking, is something you can do until you're dead. So um, and I can't imagine myself sitting around doing nothing. So that's pretty well what I'll be doing in ten years' time. Thank you. Thanks, Desley, for the entertaining and also very honest, I think, sharing of your learnings there. That's wonderful. Uh, he's transitioned from being an entrepreneur in the, co in the corporate world to being an entrepreneur, where he's been able to channel his learnings from a diverse working life into the 101's business applications, which is a software house driven from right here in central Queensland. So please welcome Richard. Okay, thanks very much. Um, thank you and welcome. Um, well, you just, you just said what I was going to say first. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, as I say, I'm Richard from 101 Business Applications, uh, a software house driven right here from central Queensland. Uh, and I'm delighted to be representing industry at this advanced Queensland Regional Forum and invited to talk about building businesses that will create jobs for the future in our region. What is innovation? Um, I struggle with that word sometimes, I have to admit. So I actually resorted to a dictionary. And the dictionary definition is quite simple. Bring in something new. So it's easy then, isn't it? Let's go on and innovate. But the question is, what is innovation for your business? Is it disruption? We're told to be disruptive. Disruptive technologies, disruptive creativity, disruptive behaviours. 101 believes in the disruption of established ways of value creation, the disruption of social interactions, and the disruption of traditional ways of doing business. Here are some examples of disruption. Eight out of 10 of these examples are based on digital technologies. Two aren't, spelling, and vacuum cleaners. But digital is the thing. So what is innovation? Is it digital? Or is it digital disruption? In his first statement, Australia's Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull urged Australians to embrace disruption. Turnbull said, the Australia of the future has to be a nation that is agile that is innovative, that is creative. We can't be defensive. We can't future-proof ourselves. We have to recognise that disruption that we see driven by technology, the volatility and change is our friend if we are agile and smart enough to take advantage of it. The volatility of change is our friend, he stated. Therefore, is the answer change? Damn right, absolutely yes. Bring in something new to change the future. 
Volatility of change is what will drive businesses like yours into the future. And if we are innovative, change will place us firmly at the centre of our future. Our businesses should be the catalyst for positive change. Why innovate? Standard answer is for the purpose of adding value to your customers. Has your business success been based on default rather than design? 101 believes in innovation by differentiation. Differentiation allows your customers to find you. It provides a reason for your customers to engage with you and to maintain and build on that engagement. There is a perception from outside our region that I've discovered that we currently have a general feeling here of negativity in regard to business development and expectation there should be a silver bullet solution. We know there is no silver bullet. We know we need to embrace change, embrace innovation now. So if we know what, why and when to innovate, we should be looking at how. As mentioned, 101 believes in innovation by differentiation. So the question is, how do you differentiate your business from your competition? What gives you the edge? What do you make, sorry, how do you make a difference to your customers? The process is great ideas, invest in the future in your people, attitude, action, just do it. 101 Learnings as a new business, we've labelled as the 101 Innovation Snowball Effect. 101 Business Application customers are innovative. They are changing the way their customers are doing business. The benefits are multiplied. We've been working with our customers to design ways for them to add value to their customers. That is their point of differentiation. In summary, think about your customers' customers and innovate your business by differentiation for their sake and for yours. That's it.